Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Can we stand this morning? Welcome to our adult Sunday school class. Amen. Brother Keith Morgan is fixing to come and take the helm. We'll be hearing from him. Uh, pastor wanted me to announce, if, which I don't see any, but if there's any children in here, we're having Sunday school in the back. Uh, anybody that's uh, youth age, they're having youth class. And anybody that's half an age, they're having a class over in the men's prayer room over to this side. Uh, feel free to go and partake and enjoy those classes. Amen. Y'all ready to hear from the word of the Lord this morning? Amen. Everybody say, God bless Brother Keith Morgan. Thank you, Brother Stanley. You may be seated. Uh, if you're a visitor here this morning, please don't, don't write our church off just because of me. We'll have a, our pastor will be here much more qualified than I am. Uh, I've got a 30-minute Bible study. That's not a lot of time, so I'm going to have to move very fast. Um, this morning I want to talk to us uh, on the subject of, of parting words. Uh, if you've got children that are old enough to think they're adults and they, they're heading out on a trip somewhere and you're standing in the driveway and they've got the window down. The things that you say to them are the things that you want them to remember. You, might be, you, you may tell them, don't text and drive. You might tell them, uh, when you get to that town now, that they, they got to, you're going to have to take a detour. Remember, be careful. You can get tripped up there. You, you might tell them, as soon as you get where you're going, call me. Let me know you're there. But my point is that, that the last things that you say to them are the things that you want them to remember the most. Now, this morning I want to look at the words that Jesus told us, the last recorded words that we had while he was physically on this earth. Because I feel those, are this, those words are just as important. Those are his parting words. Those are the things that he wants us to remember. Oh, we have those recorded in Matthew. We have them uh, recorded in Mark. And we have them recorded in Luke. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is uh, Luke chapter 24 in verses 46 and 47. And Jesus says, gives us a lot of information in a, in a very short statement. And that's what I want to look closely at. It says, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Now, it's important for us to notice the way that, that this is worded. Uh, Jesus is speaking in the third person. He's talking about himself. Okay, it's Jesus talking, and he's saying, uh, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. The only one that that would apply to would be Jesus. Uh, and that repentance and remission of sin. So we're talking about two things here, repentance and remission of sin should be preached. Now he's telling us this repentance and remission of sin should be preached. We're talking about a preached message that he's telling us about. In his name. And what is his name? Because of the context, we're talking about Christ who suffered and rose again on the third day. So repentance and remission of sin should be preached in Jesus' name. among all nations, beginning. Now this word beginning is a very, we can't overlook beginning. There is a starting point that this message that he is telling us about, these, his parting words, the last things that he's telling us, he's telling us this message, it, when you say that this message is going to begin here, that means this message hadn't even been preached yet. We haven't heard this message yet. This message begins uh, and it's going to begin at Jerusalem. And he wants, this is the message that's to be preached among all nations. It begins in Jerusalem. But then this same message about repentance and remission of sin is to be preached to all nations. Uh, so we know that, that Jerusalem is the first, first message to be preached. And we're in verse 48. It says, and you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I will send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued 
with power from on high. So let's look at everything he said. This is verse 49 and verse 51, Jesus ascends to heaven. So let's look at everything that he said here. He talks about being endued with power from on high. He talks about repentance, remission of sin, preached in Jesus' name, and preached in, in Jerusalem. So these are the keys, these are, these are the clues that we have to what he's telling us about. Now in Acts verse 1, uh, I'm chapter 1 and verse 8, uh, Jesus explained to us about this endued with power from on high. Verse 8 says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So we know when Jesus said in Jerusalem, you will be endued with power from on high. Now Jesus tells us himself that, uh, that we will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Now all of these, these points that we looked at are all contained in one chapter of, of, of Acts. In Acts chapter 2, every one of those points that Jesus, in his parting words, told us was going to happen, they all take place there. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we see there where they are endued with power from on high. Uh, according to the way Jesus said it would happen. Uh, this takes place. Everything in Acts chapter 2 takes place in Jerusalem. So it's the place that Luke 24, Jesus tells us the place that this, this message will be preached, the place they will be endued with power from on high. Uh, it, it all happens in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 2, the whole chapter takes place in Jerusalem, just like he said. Acts 2.38, there is a message that's preached. Then Peter said unto them, repent. So there's that repentance that Jesus taught us about, told us to look for, that was going to be preached. And, ba and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for. Now there's another very important word, for, because for gives us a purpose. There's a reason for the baptism. For the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus told us to look for the uh, remission of sin being preached. And Peter clearly explains to us that, that that message about remission of sin is baptism in the name of Jesus. Um, so, you know, this is a 30-minute Bible study. I, instead of, of, I want to I follow that, that Jesus name baptism. And I want to look and see, you know, is this just one place in Scripture that this shows up? Uh, you know, we have three different accounts of those parting words that Jesus, Jesus gave us. Uh, Mark 16 and 16, Jesus tells us, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So here's his parting words according to Mark, and Jesus is talking about baptism. It says, But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, I've had people tell me, so, well, it doesn't say that if he doesn't be baptized. The response to believing is being baptized. Why would you be baptized if you didn't believe? So the first step is, uh, is absolutely believing. And when someone tells me that they became a believer, I'm the first to congratulate you. That's, that is absolutely, biblically, scripturally, the first step. And I, I would congratulate you for that. Uh, but don't stop there. Uh, Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now notice, if I was an English teacher, which if you've looked at anything I've written, you would know I am not. But from an English teacher's perspective, the name would refer to one name. Now, I can show you in uh, uh, John chapter 5 where Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. Well, if Jesus came to this earth, we know his name was Jesus, and he told us, I come in my Father's name, then we know the name of the Father would be Jesus. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
to whom the Father will send in my name, he, sh he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. So the Holy Ghost is going to be sent in what name? The name of Jesus. My name is what he says. Oh, let's go back to Matthew 28, 19 for just a minute. Uh, something that any Christian would agree with is that the, the name of the Son is not Son. Now, we might not all agree about, about the name of the Father and the name of the Holy Ghost, but everybody would agree the, name of the, the Son has a name, and the name was Jesus. Now, uh, as an example... If somebody here today was to come up to me after service and say, you know, that is the best teaching I've ever heard in my life. And I want to buy, I'm going to go tomorrow to the boat dealership and I'm going to buy a brand new boat for you. I'm going to pay for it. And all you have to do is go down there and you, you pick that boat up and just go get it registered in your name. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm a poor boy. Don't put that in my name. I want you to put that in my son's name. He's got all the money. And he's going, he can pay the taxes on it. And, and he's going to be borrowing it from me anyway. He's going to be using it all the time. So put that in his name. When you go down to that boat dealership and you say, uh, when they get to that point and they're filling out that paperwork and they say, okay, what, what name are we going to put on this title? And you say, well, well he said put it in his son's name. They're, they're, they're going to have that pen in their hand waiting and looking at you to give them a name. They're not, they're not going to write his son's name on that piece of paper. The fact that, that, that you, uh, you said the, the, na the son's name, you, you haven't given a name. The, the son has to have a name. If I, if I tell someone, if I tell my, my, my child, go turn the light switch off, and they look at me and say, go turn the light switch off. They've repeated what I've said, but they haven't obeyed it. So my point is, when we know the name of the Son, and we know the name of the Father, we know the name of the Holy Ghost, we, we're, not, we're not called to repeat Matthew 28, 19. We're called to obey it. The only way we can obey Matthew 28, 19 is to baptize in the name of Jesus. Oh, we have four examples of people who were standing there the, the very day that this message was, was, that Jesus said this. All four of those baptized in the name of Jesus. So we have, we have their example to follow. Uh, let's look at Matthew 28 and 20, the very next verse. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. He's talking to his disciples here and he's telling them, you go and you tell them to obey the things that I commanded you. Now, for the most part, we're Gentiles. So I want to look at, at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 is when salvation came to the Gentiles at Cornelius. And there was an angel that appeared to Cornelius and told him, go get Peter to tell you what you need to do. And I want to read uh, Acts uh, 10 and verse 33. It says, immediately, therefore, he's telling, he's telling Peter why he sent for him. He said, immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we are all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Now, Cornelius directly asked Peter, tell us what is commanded the of God. Now let's go to uh, the same chapter, verse 47. Now in between these two chapters, they've received the Holy Ghost. And Jesus and, and Peter tells them after they've received the Holy Ghost, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he, there's that word again, he commanded them. He didn't, he didn't recommend it. He didn't say, we could do this. He commanded them. They asked him to, to teach them what God had commanded him. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And prayed they him to tarry certain days. So, one of the other uh, figures to us Gentiles in the New Testament is Paul. 
So what about Paul? Is this, is this the message that Paul taught? Uh, in Acts 22, verse 16, we have Paul giving his testimony about his conversion and when he was uh, converted. And he's talking about his baptism. And he says, and now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That would be the name of the Lord. Anybody know the name of the Lord this morning? Mm -hmm. Amen. In Acts chapter 19, we have another example of Paul. It says, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we've not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Well, let me stop and think, just think about this a moment. Many will say, well, it really doesn't matter how you baptize. You baptize, you know, if you baptize, you baptize. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. If I was baptized by John the Baptist, the very man that baptized Jesus Christ, I don't think you can top that baptism. You know, this is the very man that baptized Jesus Christ. If it doesn't matter what's said over me in baptism, then why? I don't think you, you, can, you can find a superior baptism than to be baptized by the very man that baptized Christ. Well, let's see what Paul says about that. He said, John verily baptized, Ties with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we have Paul preaching the same message, the exact same message that Peter preached, the same message that Jesus on, on, in Luke had told us that we needed to look for, the remission of sin. Uh, in Romans chapter 6, Paul, Paul, in his teaching to the Roman church, puts it in a little different language, but it's the same, it's the same principle, different, different way of saying the same thing. It says, Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. And when we talk about the body of sin might be destroyed, we're talking about uh, baptism. He, he, we, we're buried with him in the likeness of his death. Uh, we're baptized into Christ. Now, when we talked about uh, sin, uh, baptism being a purpose for the remission of sin. We talked about uh, in another place where you know, we're calling on the name of the Lord, washing away our sins. And he's putting, and Paul is explaining it this way, that this body of sin might be destroyed, that we henceforth should not serve sin. Uh, for he that is dead is free from sin. Uh, I want to bring up, uh, let's, let's read in Acts verse 8. What we have is, a, we have a, a, the story of the eunuch. And this story reminds me of, 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 of Mark. 16, 16, where Jesus said, he, he that believeth and is baptized. Because here we see that, that same type of response to, to, the, to learning and, and to the teaching and preaching. We see that response. Uh, now this is a eunuch. And it says, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch, the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized now we don't often do that in, in today's world 
you know. In today's world, the, the eunuch might have said, well, now, you know, uh, uh, Sunday after next, I've got some of my family that's coming up from Ethiopia, and they're going to be fishing over here on the Sea of Galilee, going to be coming through Jerusalem. And, you know, uh, if we could set something up in a couple weeks there, we could have a baptism service. And, 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 and you know, Philip say, well, you know, I think Peter's got some fish in the deep freeze. We could have a big fish fry and celebrate. You know, now, if you did it that way, I, I, there's nothing against that. I'm, I'm, but what I'm pointing out is that the eunuch, when he understood the gospel, and he understood that, that this is for the remission of my sin. Jesus died. His blood, it needs to be applied to my life to remove the sin from me. He, he seen water, and he said, look, there's, there's water right there. Is, is there any reason you can't baptize me right here, right now? And, and what I have to say to anybody here is if, if, if the same thing. What would hinder you from being baptized? Because that baptistry right there takes 20 minutes to get warm water in. And we've got baptismal robes in the back. I'm here to tell you, if you're here today and you, you're not sure how you were baptized, if you, don't, if you don't know that you understood that when I was baptized, that was for the remission of my sin, and you're not positive it was in Jesus' name, you don't have to go home wondering if, if, if this is really right. You don't, you don't have to wonder that. I love our, our, our new, new Life Church Facebook page. Because when I look through that page and I see all these that were baptized, like Brother Jerry, and I see those hands lifted straight in the air, and I see a smile from ear to ear, and I can go through there and show you page after page of, of, of different ones that's been through this baptistry and understood that when they come up from out of that water that the, every sin that they'd ever committed was washed away. The joy, the cleansed feeling, the, the, the clean slate. Somebody could go home with that feeling today. And there's no reason for it. We, we'll stay here all day if that's what we need to do. But I would say to anyone that hasn't been baptized in Jesus' name, what does hinder you? We'll be starting up service here in just a few minutes. Uh, please don't judge us on me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll be taking a break here and we'll be starting, I think, at what, 1045? Okay. And I thank you for bearing with me this morning. <laughs>